One of the most common questions I get is how to find a good research topic. This is sometimes the most important part because if you don't choose a proper topic, you will end up getting stuck with a project for a long time and not getting it published. Hi, this is Dr. Jia. Today, I'm going to talk about the six steps you need to take to find a good research topic. Number one, understand the rules of the game of your institution. Depending on the level you are at, your institution may have different requirements. So the first consideration is the type of research output. For example, an assistant professor may need a, some, a certain number of first author papers of original research to get promoted, whereas residents, residents and fellows may only need a conference abstract. Second consideration, type of projects or study design. Think about what counts, quality improvement, medical education, and some medical students or fellows could be even taking a separate master's degree or PhD, then you would need a more rigorous study method. Your program may also have specific requirements on the type of data collection. For example, you may need primary data collection or secondary data collection. Certainly, you can always do more than the requirement, but you must never do less than what is required because that would mean that you're underperforming. Number two, you must have a basic understanding understanding of research concepts. Uh, before pursuing a whole research project, you need to know what a research question is, the, the different study design, a baseline understanding of key terms of a research paper. For example, what's the definition, what's a measurement, what's a variable, what's an outcome. Um, you also want to know what a literature review is, what it is, how to do it. If you do not know these core concepts, then you will not be able to assess the current state of the field or even know what constitutes a good project. And you will end up wasting time doing projects that are not good, not viable, or a project that already has been extensively researched. Number three, define your broad area. Here, choose a broad area based on several things. Um, so these are a few ideas you can try. The first consideration is future goals. Think about what specialty you want to get into. For example, if you want to get into gastroenterology, choose that field. Second consideration, personal experience. You may have a personal story, personal interest, or experience. Start from where you are. So if you are already a physician, then sometimes it's even easier. Think about your day-to-day -day life. What are the problems you've encountered? Or what are the common issues faced by your patients? These are questions you can start with. The third way is to get inspired by other people's experiences. For example, when you attend grand rounds or conferences, listen with the intention of getting research ideas. Sometimes the speaker will talk about um, a big gap in a field or what future studies must be done in order to move the field forward. So this will be a good place to start. Also, think about your mentors or supervisors. I recommend doing some baseline literature review first before talking to, to them. That way you can have a meaningful discussion. Some research mentors have many ideas, but the, their ideas are typically geared towards their own niche or their own interests. If you have your own interests, they may still pull you back to their own interests. Or if they do suggest something that is outside of their niche field, they may not know the research gap as well. So don't just take their word for it. You should still do a proper literature review. So now brings me to step four, literature review. This is a really, really important step. You need to spend enough time to understand the current level of knowledge in the field and the research gap. So how do you do it? You use PubMed or Google Scholar to find articles. Choose one that is an updated review paper um, and a few original research papers. And make sure you choose those that are from reputable journals, highly cited and recent. After you're done with those first few, look at the reference list to find more articles. And what are you trying to assess? First, what is the current state of evidence? What has been done before? And what problem remains? If you find that there is minimal data, then you actually have to question yourself. Is there really a white space um, and a big opportunity for you? Or is it because nobody in the field really cares about this topic? Next question, next consideration when you're reading the paper is the level of evidence high. So that means are the studies of good quality? Uh, are there only case series on the topic? If so, then maybe you can do retrospective cohort studies to add a higher level of evidence to the field. But if there are already meta-analyses or randomized controlled trials, your retrospective cohort study may not be adding much to your field. Uh, next, next consideration future directions or future research in need. For this, typically you can find it in the discussion section. Just look for the keyword future direction and you can find that. One common question I get is, how many papers do I need to read? 
So it is difficult to tell you exactly how many. It's, it depends on the maturity of the field. For some fields that are very advanced in research, you may have to read through many, many more articles before finding it again. A rule of thumb, a less mature field, I would say at least 15 to 20, but a more mature a more mature field will require at least 20 to 30 articles. I know conducting a research project is an overwhelming process, so I made the idea to paper blueprint for you. This blueprint takes you through a seven step process from idea generation to paper submission. So be sure to get a copy by clicking a link below. All right, number five, narrow your topic down and find an angle. I learned this from Wendy Laura Belcher. Um, in order for your paper to be publishable, you need to talk about something new on something old. And finally, it should be of interest to your field. In other words, your project must have one idea or angle on something that already has some baseline evidence and on a topic that your field cares about. And when we say something new, it does not mean the first, the very first one. It just means a different angle or variation. So how do we think about angles? Think about different population, different socioeconomic factors, different variables. A note about different variables. These variables must be clinically important and not just because it has not been done before. Um, other angles, different contexts. Uh, for example, if this medication has been used for treatment, you can ask, will it be effective for prevention? Or if an intervention was used in an outpatient setting, what about using it in inpatient setting? Um, another angle, different study method or statistical method that is more robust. Or it could be a different study method that gives you a deeper understanding. For example, a qualitative study could add to a more nuanced uh, understanding on the psychology of how patients make decisions on a certain treatment. Narrowing down your research topic requires multiple iterations. So talk to your supervisors about your idea. Ask them, is this viable? Is it clinically important? Um, what are the barriers? And now this leads me to the final consideration. Number six, resources. What resources are needed to perform the research project? The first resource, time. How much time do you have? Can you do a prospective cohort study if you are graduating in two years? I mean, you can do it, but the results will only come years later. Uh, second resource, money. Do you have funds to compensate participants? If not, you can still do research projects, but probably those that rely on existing data, such as observational studies or maybe simple survey studies. Next resource, skill. Do you have the skills to conduct a randomized controlled trial? Um, what about statistics? How are you going to attain that skill? Are there special services in your institution that can help you? And so this brings me to the next resource, people. Do you have the right people to guide you? Think about content expert, study design expert, a biostatistician. What about a librarian? Because they are really good at guiding you on how to do systematic reviews. And the next resource, data. Is there a way to get access to the data? Is it, um, it, do you want a specific patient population? You have to think about that. Your access to these resources is probably sometimes, is probably the biggest driver in your final research project. So now that you have narrowed down your research idea, it is time to refine your idea further into a research question. So I want you to head over to the next video where I go deeper into developing a research question. I'll see you there.